We're outside the Palais ahead of the 62nd Cannes International Film Festival. The red carpet is being laid behind me, the seances have yet to commence, and this festival is still very much a work in progress. But over the next 10 days, we'll be bringing you the stars, the scandal, the gossip, and some of the films as well, from what on paper at least looks like a vintage year for the Cannes Film Festival. The sea is calm, the yachts are in dry dock. At the moment, Cannes is the home of builders, carpenters, carpet layers and workmen. This is the calm before the storm, but here is where it all begins. We're on the beach in Cannes and I'm joined by Guardian film critic Peter Bradshaw. Um, Peter, this looks like a very exciting festival. It looks like a festival that will be absolutely replete with excitement and I'm sure it's going to be in that high auteurist sense that we always want from Cannes. And sometimes we get, sometimes we get it, and sometimes we don't. But yes, it really it's, it sort of looks mouthwatering. I mean, it's like a hall of fame, isn't it, of kind of past Palme d'Or winners? Oh yeah, I mean, to see Anna René, 86 years old, 50 I mean, years fifth, after he was first 50 years, here. I mean, a virtual kind of living ancestor of the new wave of Cannes, of French cinema itself, to see him here, it's kind of wonderful in a way. I don't know what his movie's going to be like. My excitement is at medium level, I have to say about René, but, but to see him here, it's, it's, it's incredible. So what, looking at the schedule which we've just received today, what, looking at that, what are the kind of ones that you, the real hot tickets, the ones that you particularly want to see? Uh, I am really looking forward to seeing it. I've seen it once already, but I'd like to see it again, is uh, Ken Loach's movie, Looking for Eric. Uh, a very kind of charming, engaging movie, which uh, has the remarkable, uh, remarkable coup of getting Eric Cantona. Sometimes we forget that you're just a man. I'm not a man. I am Cantona. <laughs> now, someone I know you're not a fan of is Lars von Trier, um, who, but he's always kind of guaranteed to sort of whip up some sort of interest on the croissant. Yeah, he's his, back. his great moment is always kind of before the film and after the film and sort of around the film, the film itself is always sort of rubbish. No, to be it's, not. With you. it's not. It's oh, not. Dogville was good. Dogville is all right. Mandalay's slightly better. Dancer in the Dark, one of the first films I think I've ever seen. Which won the Palme d'Or? Which won the Palme d'Or. He's come up with this film which looks like it's going to be just an ordinary horror film. But as you so rightly say, it could be one of his vast and gigantically unfunny hoaxes. Uh, his colossal practical jokes at our expense. Yeah. Who will ever know? What about somebody else who always manages to whip the press into a frenzy, Quentin Tarantino, who yeah. of course won here for, for Pulp Fiction back in 94, okay. um, and was jury president a couple of years ago, yeah. uh, and is now back with uh, Inglorious Bastards. Yes, he has effectively remade this very, very obscure, uh, very kind of rackety, heavily dubbed Italian movie from 1978, sort of feel that only Quentin Tarantino could love or really know anything about. An American Secret Service outfit lives deep behind enemy lines. The Germans call them the bastards. You probably heard we ain't in the prisoner taking business. We in the killing Nazi business. Businesses are booming. He's recast it as a revenge movie, uh, the idea of Jewish American soldiers coming back on a kind of behind the lines mission to take revenge on Nazis. This is all a, based on fact, presumably. This is all, yes, exactly. This is the intensely <laughs> this historical, is, yes. uh, historical it's record. Things, really. I wonder, really, to be honest with you, I, I wonder when I see Brad Pitt with his new Clark Gable moustache. Now, Peter, the great rule of Cannes for, for those who've been coming for a while is that yeah. nobody ever knows what's going to win the Palme no. d'Or, right up until like the, the final whistle. No. Um, so with that in mind, what film is going to win the Palme d'Or? Don't look at the films, look at the jury. Uh, and the jury, is, uh, the jury has a, a habit of, particularly if they're guided by a strong president, of choosing something that they would never really like themselves and never want to be in, something like that. So Isabel Huppert is in charge. That spells very bad news for Michael Haneke, very bad news for all the French people, especially, you know... Because uh, she's been in two Hanukkah she's been films. Two Hanukkah films. Uh, it's not good news for Xavier Giannoli, which is a shame because he's such an interesting guy. Not great news for Jacques Audiard. Um, I wonder if it will go to one of the Asian directors who are traditionally adored by the kind of critical contingent, and yet they somehow slightly slide away mm. from the radar at the last moment. I don't know. I would be fascinated to see Lou Ye win it uh, for what looks like a, a very uh, for Asian, for a Chinese film, it looks like a very erotic film and a very dark, a kind of noirish and film. And this is a man who's been banned, He's been banned for five years yeah. for making a film and made this sort of under the radar. Yeah, exactly. Kind of fascinating. Uh, I would be interested to see him 
Who knows? It could be Andrea Arnold. Could 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 the put other British out. hope the other in British, the competition? Yeah, yeah. Well, Peter, I mean, two weeks from now, we shall know. We shall know. Um, and it and you all. You can have your money back. <laughs> have my money back. You, you can, can buy me back. a drink. I will do. Okay. It all begins here. It all begins here. So, so you see. enjoy, Peter Bradshaw. Thanks very much. Thank you.